Well, we have been seeing a new phenomenon this past year, along with a huge influx of all kinds of coronavirus stories, some facts, some fiction, or better yet, coined as fake news. Do you feel me? It's very easy to get overwhelmed with life and everything happening right now related to the pandemic and the upcoming presidential election. And right now, especially on social media, we're seeing plenty of uncertainty on what and who to trust. So how do we handle it all and work through conflicting feelings, opinions, and confusion? Transformation coach Tristan Guttner joins us now to talk about different ways to deal and how self-care can be helpful as we work through mistrust during COVID. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. Talk about why there is a crisis of confusion and mistrust, especially regarding COVID right now. Yeah, we, we as humans crave certainty. It's how we source our safety, it's how we understand to have a sense of security in our life. Obviously, we're in a very unpredictable time right now. There is very little certainty there's a lot of conflicting information. So humans are looking around, trying to understand how to feel safe, looking to leaders to provide information to help that experience go on. Right now, according to CNN, only 30% of Americans trust the information that President Trump is providing about COVID. So regardless of our particular and personal political leanings, what this is showing us is there's infighting, there's incongruence, there's disagreement between leaders and experts on what's true here. And this is creating this crisis of confusion and mistrust for American citizens. People do not know who to turn to, right? Right, and then I guess once people start believing their source, it's hard to kind of open up your mind and start to, to realize like, oh, maybe someone else is actually telling the truth. It goes back and forth. So why yes. do you think that self-care and tending to our emotional and psychological well-being is especially important right now? Well, Here's the thing, people don't typically make changes in their life. They wait for life to change around them. The challenge being we're then at the mercy of our circumstances in order to feel better. So right now, if we're waiting for the circumstances to change so that we can feel better, we're going to be waiting a long time. COVID's with us for the foreseeable future. Yeah, that's What's significant true. There's, though there's is no this. End, there's no end date. There's no, no. <laughs> it's, it's really day by day. You know, we're not going back to normal. That's not the way this treatment is moving. True, true. And, so how, and so uh, the idea for me always is this, regardless of the infighting and confusion um, amongst those in charge who are supposed to be leading right now, it's our choice to take our mental well-being into our own hands. And it's a choice we can make now. And to answer your question maybe a little more directly, we're in a mental health crisis right now in the United States. You know, according to the New York Times, psychological distress levels have tripled since pre-COVID time. So like overwhelm is off the charts, stress is off the charts, loneliness is off the charts. And we know that those things lead to a severe likelihood, a severe increase in the likelihood of depression, anxiety, suicide. So this is really important and it's up to us to make the required changes for ourselves rather than waiting for the world to change to make it easier. I think you make a good point there, Tristan, because we can control what we're going to focus on and, and talk a little bit more about how what we're focusing on impacts how we're feeling throughout the day. That's an, an awesome question. And, you know, it's the most important thing. We know from numerous studies, scientific and otherwise, that what we focus on has a massive impact on how we feel. We tend to amplify whatever it is we're focused on. Right now, most people are focused on what they're receiving in the news, which creates a feeling uh, sometimes of terror, certainly of confusion, doubt, etc. And so that ex emotional experience is amplifying for people. So I've been recommending to all my clients, anyone that I end up talking to through this, find things to be hopeful for. Focus on those things. When you talk to other people, don't commiserate about how awful this is or how scared you are. It's okay to have that experience. I'm not judging but commiserate about things that bring you joy and inspiration. You'll leave that conversation feeling elevated. And I think we all need that. right now. Yeah, I guess spinning the positive, finding the silver lining, any other self-care practices that you, we can easily, I guess, start implementing in our everyday routine. Yeah, absolutely. The, the first is give your nervous system a break. We are bombarded by all this information from all these different sources all the time. So 
I'm recommending to everyone, consume less media. Consume enough that you feel well-informed and can make positive, informed decisions for yourself. But when you start to feel overwhelmed by what you're receiving, turn it off. No screen time for the first hour of the day and the last hour of the day. Take that time to nourish yourself, whether it's through meditation, yoga, exercise, whatever serves you. Give yourself that time and space to, to regenerate, to rejuvenate, and also to give yourself some time to actually integrate and digest all the information and experiences you are receiving. It's a lot. And therapy, you talked about mental health being in a mental health crisis right now. Then you think about therapy. Is that yeah. a possible answer for a lot of people? For a lot of people, I, I think everyone's needs are really different. So if therapy is a good fit for you, absolutely do not hesitate. If coaching is a good fit, do not hesitate. I'm just recommending that everyone go reach out to whatever sources they think are going to serve them best because we are all different. We all have very different needs. And Wherever it is you reach out for help, I'm really urging people to think about the situation the following way. Regardless of how things look, things are not crumbling right now. They're just rearranging. And they're rearranging to make space for the positive change that we all really desire. So ultimately, this is all moving towards something very beautiful and positive. So let's talk about childhood. Does that play a part in how we deal with self-care as a grown-up? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so many people, I would say almost everybody, if not everybody, it's we develop this psychological pattern when we're really young to always look to authority figures to maybe have permission to make the choices we want to make, to trust ourselves. So most people are not taught how to trust themselves. Hence, we're in a situation like this where nobody really knows what's going on. Everybody is looking to authority figures to understand this and understand how to move through it. And the authority figures aren't really able to provide a clear path because the truth is nobody knows. So it starts to touch on this very deep childhood material that for most people is completely unreconciled. They don't know how to trust themselves. They don't know how to make clear-headed decisions towards what they want in the midst of confusion. Right, all of us are just trying to make the best decisions we can, but like you said, it's uncharted waters. Um, and then there's the people, I think you talked about this in the last half, um, they may be waiting for the pandemic to end because they think that's when they're gonna finally feel better. What do you say to people who are playing this waiting game? The time is now and it has to be now because we all have different ways where we wait for life to change around us because that tends to make change feel easier it's much more scary to make a decision and to just go for something because we run the risk of failing, doing it incorrectly. If life happens to us, we're not really in the driver's seat, so we're not on the hook for that level of personal responsibility. So I'm telling everybody the time is now. Even though things are returning to some sense of normalcy, you have the NBA returning and a lot of other cultural institutions um, making some attempt to do this, you can see that people's psyche wants to okay, we're back to normal, now I can do this. No, 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 because all that can disappear. So I'm just recommending for everyone to find what's true for you, to find what you're actually inspired to go do, and to go do it regardless of the circumstances. Tristan, have those stress levels really gone through the roof since COVID-19? I mean, I'm assuming that's the culprit. And then our nervous systems, they're getting overwhelmed too. Yeah, absolutely. And... The, the stress levels have gone through the roof. I think they've stabilized maybe to a certain degree. But again, you look around and everyone's just waiting for the world to change so we can all feel better. So maybe they have uh, decreased a little bit, but I don't really think so. And the, the challenge with that, the challenge with that consistent overwhelm, as you said, is people's nervous systems are ratcheted up. When that is the case, when our nervous system is overloaded, we are completely out of our conscious and our logical mind, and we're back into our subconscious mind, which is all based on survival. It's not designed to thrive. It's designed to keep us alive in this moment. So when we're in that space, we're not making decisions from an elevated perspective that can actually take us forward. We're making a decision from a place that can actually only keep us exactly where we are. And this is why self-care, it's so important right now, be in touch with how you're feeling. You also help entrepreneurs who want to take control of their businesses. Can you tell us more about how you come in there and can make a difference? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a pretty pertinent question right now because we're seeing a lot of entrepreneurs, the entertainers I work with, all sorts of people going like, uh, okay, 
I'll move forward with this project or this passionate thing or build my business once things settle down. I'm always going like, no, the, t the time is now. This is creating opportunities to do things in a whole new way. Therefore, it is indicating the way we've been doing things was, if not broken, at least not working to its highest degree. So people bring me in when they are already experiencing a fairly high level of success. And they're just thinking and feeling to themselves, you know what, there's more for me here. There's a higher level of service I can provide. There's a higher level of abundance that I'm inspired to create for myself and others. And we go in and quite simply, we just look at what's happening between their two years that we can adjust very subtly because the opportunities for all of us to thrive are already here. That's not a problem. We have to be able to recognize those opportunities and have the courage to move through our self-doubt and our fear to seize them and then go create and go serve at a higher level. Very good. Tristan Gunner, great insight this morning. We appreciate you joining us on the show. If you want to hear about some of the success stories or more from Tristan, go to tristangutner.com.